I decided to grow my brows back a couple of months ago, and every single tutorial I've done since then involves me covering them up. Why, I'm, I'm so weird, I, I really don't get me sometimes. Hi everyone, so today you are going to witness me attempting to recreate the look of Draco Oho Zahaza while talking about bizarre films. Yes, you have reached that weird part of YouTube again, I'm sorry. I became aware of Draco Oho Zahaza when I read an article about him in Bizarre Magazine. I don't have a, many brushes, that's why I'm using my finger. But I read an article about him in Bizarre Magazine and I watched a recent documentary film made of him and disappointingly for me, I hadn't actually heard of him, which I was very disappointed about because I'm normally, I am normally up to date with um, um, characters, if you like. Um, but I hadn't actually heard of them, but I found him really, really interesting, and I really enjoyed the documentary on on him. He had such a really interesting life, and he had a very interesting look about him as well. So I thought I'd recreate that look, and. I really think the look isn't something you can talk about really. I'm not really sure what I'm really doing with this look. So I'm going to ki kill two birds with one stone because I was going to do this in two videos. But um, I've been watching, I've watched five films recently and I thought I would just talk about them really. And what I've done to um, make it a bit more random. Obviously there some I've preferred more than others but I put um, I've written their names and put them into pieces of paper like this, so I can pick them at random. So, uh, okay, I'm going to skip forward the contouring bit because that's boring. I don't really think Draco used any foundation. Um, his makeup looked very sort of slap dashed and caked in, almost like tattooed on. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if if his makeup, some of his makeup, was actually tattooed on. Um, but when I do sort of dragon looks, I kind of like to sort of have a plain base to work with. Anyway, let's start off with the first film. Let's see, let's start off with... Yeah. First film is Bad Boy Bubby. Now this is an Australian film from the early 90s, which I hadn't really heard of until recently, until the IMDb recommended it to me. And this was a very, very nice little discovery for me. I really, really, really like this film. But I don't know if it would be everyone's cup of tea. I often feel that like, feel like way with films that I like. Um, it's not the happiest film in the world by any, any stretch of the imagination. It's like a disturbing feel-good film. The story is about a man in his mid-thirties who has been kept prisoner in his mother's basement all of his life by his own mother. So the first half of the opening half of the film is quite... Um, difficult to watch it's in parts um, there's some incest and animal, animal cruelty and it is quite hard to watch in parts but eventually he escapes and not to spoil I won't tell you how he escapes but eventually he does escape and um, long story short like he when he escapes we kind of we and him enter this alien world which is our own world but because he's never been there it's alien to him it's just like heartwarming, comedic, darkly funny the things he goes through in this alien world um, because, well, it is alien to him because he's never seen it before so that's Bad Boy Bubby and I, yeah, I really enjoyed that film the second film is yeah, the second film is Mum and Dad now this is a recent little horror Brit flick. The first thing I'll say about this film, well the main the problem I have with this film is that I think it tried too hard. I think disturbing films and characters work best and are more effective when their sort of disturbing quality and characteristics are sort of hidden and underlying. Um, but uh, Disturb like the disturbing scenes and disturbing like aspects of this film were so in your face that it wasn't it kind of lost its effects so it actually becomes a bit too much um 
there's not much to say about this film really. I mean, the basic plot of it is the story of a young girl who's basically held captive and tortured in the home by a mum, a dad, and they have two children, but they're not, they're not actually their children. And the mum and dad are a bit. Uh, that's basically it really. I mean, there's no backstory to the film and the film kind of ends like that so there's no, it's like a snapshot once it's kind of um once sort of ends like that um that's really all I have to say really I mean if you like I probably won't watch it again but I didn't hate it but I know that everyone has different tastes so I'd recommend this to somebody who if you like sort of like short claustrophobic, um, kind of like no nonsense, no backstory, no like leading on to anything films, just want to sit down and watch something that's um, really extreme but really snapshot, then I'd recommend this film. You know, I didn't, you know, I probably won't watch it again. I think people get disturbed in films in different ways. As I said, I like disturbing films that have a sort of underlying thing to them. Um, like these things, these disturbing things were so in your face um, that it was quite hard to feel kind of uncomfortable. The uncomfortable scenes I felt more cringy rather than disturbed, if that makes sense. But yeah, if it sounds like your cup of tea, then check it out. It's uh, called Mum and Dad, and I think it's on YouTube actually. I think you can watch it on YouTube. Okay, let's do the next film. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Megan is missing. Uh, yeah. The one thing I will say about this film is do not watch this film. This is probably the most annoying film I've ever seen in my life. And I'll tell you why. This film has all the elements of a film that would really annoy me. I am, I'm just, I'm, I'm not into sort of teen horror films, and particularly teen, recent teen horror films that do a sort of cyber, a cyber world of horror. Um, only because, you know, I've never been, when I was, uh, I think the girl's about 14 or 15, I was never like that. Um, I wasn't a typical, typical teenager. Um, and also farm footage films, I think they've kind of lost their effect right now. Um, just because we've become so technologically advanced and, you know, sceptical that it's kind of lost its shock value now. I mean, you can say a film's found footage, but deep down, you know, we know it's not. I can remember when The Blair Witch Project came out and how I was about 10 years old at the time. And me and my friends watched it when we were probably a bit too young to be watching it. And I remember when that came out, and that was like had a real shock value to it. But now, I think it's kind of lost lost its effect now. Saying that, the ending of this film scared the shit out of me, and I am so pissed off that it did. I mean, seriously, when it ended, I was like, no, 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 you did not scare me. You did not scare me. Oh my god. But, saying that, I'll just take the last, the sort of scary bit is the last 20 minutes of the film is um, filmed on a camera and it's all, it's real, obviously. And um, it's basically what the guy is doing to this girl and, what, and we find out what happened to the other girl. And I think, honestly, just to blow my own trumpet and to um, give me benefit of the doubt, I think I would have felt exactly the same if you show me the last 20 minutes of the film without watching the other part of the film. So that's my... Um, I think it's just the thought of it rather than the actual watching it, because it is a horrible thing that he does to the girls. Um, just to give you a bit of a um, loose backstory, it's basically about a um, about meeting guys online and they're not who they say they are, basically, and um, the ending is about a girl called Megan who goes missing because she meets a guy online and surprise surprise he isn't actually who he says he is um, and it's all done on found footage and some found footage parts I think are like it wouldn't be found footage so that kind of annoyed me a bit um, 
And basically the last 20 minutes of the film, we find out what's happened to it. It's a bit like spoilers, the Dutch film spoilers, but spoilers is a lot better. Um, kind of like, like that, we do find out eventually what happens to them. But yeah, do not watch it, because it really annoyed me. Because it, it scared me, the ending. Sorry guys, I'm really crap at this. I mean, I'm trying to talk and put makeup on at the same time. It's a bit... I mean, this isn't the make neatest makeup, make makeup in the world. And I think Draco was always in the right state of mind to put on his makeup. <laughs> so, that's my excuse. Okay, I'm going to try and do my eyeliner while talking about the next film, which is... Oh. Dogtooth. Now, when I think when dark issues are tackled in a sort of um, kind of light-hearted comedic way, I think that makes them even more dark. Um, and I think Greek t it's a Greek film, Dogtooth, is a bona fide example of this. It's basically about a family that consists of a mum, a dad, two daughters and a son. And children are about early 20s, I'm guessing. They live in a massive house and the gates and the doors are always open to them and yet the children have never left the house in their life. They have been in prison purely from their father feeding them, manipulating brainwashing lies about what lies beyond their garden fence. And the title of the film stems from one of the lies that they are told by their father. You can leave the house when you lose the first of your second set of dog teeth. And basically the way he manipulates them is he'll tell them that different words have different definitions to what we know. Um, for example, like um, a salt shaker is called a phone, for example, and the aeroplanes in the sky are just toys. So he calls teeth, these are dog teeth we have, and he tells them that you can leave the house when you lose your second set of the first of your second set of dog teeth. Obviously humans have baby teeth and then adult teeth. We don't lose adult teeth um, until we're much, much, much older when we um, get into elderly age. Um, so basically they're not going to leave. Um, that's the way, he's, the way he tricks them. And there is a scene, not to spoil it, but there is a scene where the oldest, I think it's the oldest daughter, is in the bathroom and she has a I think it's a dumbbell, she's looking in the mirror and she takes it to her mouth and her adult, one of her adult teeth falls out into the sink and she stares at it and it's, it's kind of like, what does she do? So I think I would recommend, I'd, really really clever, unique film. Yeah, I've noticed it's been a kind of, a somewhat theme with the movies I've been mentioning, sort of kidnap and imprisonment. Yeah, because I'm so good at planning um, planning videos, um, I've come to the last film and I'm not even, I don't know if I'm even halfway done, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of fast forward through a bit of this makeup. Because I think if I don't talk then I'll probably be able to con concentrate more. Okay, now the final film. Um, now I think I've mentioned this. Uh, I'm all this stuff out of the way. I've mentioned this recent little French film a couple of times on my channel, but I've never really gone into into too much depth about it. And the film is Martyrs. Now this film affected me in a really big way, and to be honest, I don't know if it was in a good way or in a bad way. It just did. I think the main reason why it affected me so much is because I didn't really know what I was letting myself in for when I when I got it. To be honest, I was quite shallow shallow when I bought it. I bought it because I liked the cover. I liked the look of the cover and 
Um, I honestly thought it was about vampires because the cover, I mean, the two girls looking pale and bloody and the title, because I think Martyrs is about, um, basically means people who are very close to death but not quite dead, so I thought perhaps vampires. I had no idea what the film was about and it was a pleasant, well, not really a pleasant, it was a real shock to me actually. Um, I, let's say this, I probably would put it on my top 50 films list, but I would probably never watch it again. Uh, basically, just to give you the kind of gist of the story, um, the film opens, opens up with a girl running down a street and she's totally emaciated and she's crying, her clothes are ripped and she's um, found and it turns out she's escaped from being held captive for a number of years as a, as a child. She's um, rescued and put into a home where she befriends another girl who lives there and then time flies by and she's now out and she, along with the help of her friend, um, are determined to go back and try and go back to the place of the house where she was held captive and exact revenge on and try and track down the people who are held a captive and lots of demons are revealed and um, you know lots of like disturbing scenes and yeah um, that's basically the gist of the story I will say something which I found really interesting and I don't know why about this film and if you're a girl and you've seen this film, I don't know if you've ever come across this, all of my girlfriends who have seen it, seen this film, have said that they found it really extreme but they enjoyed it and they thought it was a really good, like, like, intense film. All of my guy friends who have seen it said they couldn't watch it. Like, they found it really difficult to watch. My, um, one of my guy friends, who is a complete extreme horror junkie, I was just chatting to him and ironically I'd, I'd just seen Mart Martyrs a few weeks before and he was talking to me and he said oh he said oh god Laura, I saw this film the other week and I, I couldn't finish it and I said oh what was it and he goes it's Martyrs and I don't know why but every guy I've talked to who has seen it who has seen it every man I've talked to who has seen it said they found it they couldn't they they found it really difficult to watch and I don't know why I mean, it is, don't get me wrong, it is a really, really intense, extreme, disturbing film. Uh, and in fact, Mark Commode, who is a, um, he's a movie critic here in England, he was saying that it was the first time, March is, it was the first time that he um, was so tempted to walk out of a screening without the film being crap basically he he was he felt so overwhelmed by the film that he felt he couldn't um he couldn't finish it um which i thought was really quite bizarre um i was just thinking about this in terms of a similar film i don't know of many that's that are like completely similar um the film is about being held not just being held captive but kind of getting revenge on captors so obviously you kind of see like kind of flashbacks to being to them being held captive, and you see, um, yeah, it's. If anyone can think of like a film that's similar, you can comment below. So yeah, Martyrs. Um, I don't know if I could recommend it, but I'm glad I watched it basically. And if if it sounds like your kind of film then you know check it out. I think it's like one of those it's a good sleepover film I think. Good girly sleepover film. And yes I am going for the moustache. Wasn't going to but I was like you know fuck it. Hence the masking tape. Okay, what I'm going to do, I think, is just quickly just finish off, but fast forward through it.
Okay, I'm done now. I mean, I am really done because the World Cup final is about to start. Um, and to be honest, this was just a bit of fun. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I did warn you it would be a bit extreme. Um, so, yeah, um, I hope you're all well. And um, I've got a couple the next six weeks I'm quite busy, so I might not be doing many videos. I'm not sure. Um, I'll try and fit, fit a few in if I've got any breaks. But, yeah, um, thank you for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Ciao.